uh, we are in the right uh, meeting room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not many uh, students come. So finally, your group select uh, with the ECG. Oh, sorry, EEG e one, yeah, yeah. Okay, how about Josh? Josh? Hi, Josh. Mm. So, uh, Tom, uh, uh, Tim, have you ever learned uh, uh, something about uh, 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 artificial intelligence or classification? Um, I did the uh, neural network and fuzzy logic subject. Okay. So I did some uh, neural network stuff in that and fuzzy logic classification. Oh, that's good. So yeah. lots of group maybe also. You you are a bachelor student or you are you are bachelor, right? Yes. Yeah. Sure oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes, today because uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, how to do the classification. I mean, if some students maybe never touch this uh, topic, mm. so I, I need to give some uh, introduction. Seems not many students join today. Mm. Hi, good time. Josh? Good time. I think uh, not many uh, students, but we still need to uh, start. So today, uh, hello everyone, good night. So uh, have you uh, all select the uh, project already? Hi, good time. Hi, have you select the project? Okay. Uh, actually, I which one you selected? Um, so we selected the ECG one, the one that manages the filling out. Okay. So ECG one. Uh, we took the ECG one. Mm -hmm. uh, ECG signal classification based on signal ECG type. Okay. I actually I put the uh, uh, PDF there, but maybe I I shouldn't tell where it is. Um. Maybe we go to the canvas. Actually, in the modular, well, welcome. So I put there two versions because this is the new version here. Okay. This have all the. Um, sorry. Uh, Can you open? It's in the, it's in the module section, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, in the welcome section. So I put the updated uh, study guide. Okay. Yeah, this is one uh, I put here. Another is I put in the uh, le uh, lecture six. If we go to lecture six, 
and uh, in the I think SCART guide update and put here. Uh, sorry, I mean I forgot to share the screen. So I forgot to share the screen. Yeah, you can just see now. So have you seen the study guide? I've updated study guide. Okay. And also, I think I put the, this is only I based on uh, how many groups select different project I put there. And uh, I put the, I mean, the, the, the full version, actually I put all the things is in the, uh, in the modular first welcome module because I need to, uh, in the welcome, module and then I put the uh, this is a version 2 I put all the project uh, for you to select so that's a uh, that's the new uh, study guide so uh, currently uh, No, we uh, start to do uh, to introduce today. Today I'm I'm discuss about uh, classification. If we go to uh, lecture seven, so lecture seven and the lecture eight, I will uh, open lecture eight as well. This lecture, uh, lecture seven. Basically, I will teach you about uh, uh, classification. So last week we discussed about modeling. So modeling uh, is actually the input is uh, continuous. Normally, uh, it's continuous, and output is continuous. So you can consider about classification is a special kind of modeling. Uh, but the output, for example, the modeling of uh, of the model, the output is actually it's discrete time uh, output. Uh, so it's uh, uh, can be zero and one. If it's two class, it's zero and one. So maybe I uh, ask uh, you uh, to do uh, some like. Uh, Have you have you ever learned a uh, classification algorithm? So uh, maybe so maybe half of them uh, have learned uh, classification already. So that's good. So in that case, I will uh, not uh, I mean uh, uh, worry too much. Uh, at least if one group or one person know classification, uh, that would be uh, great. So actually, because these uh, subjects. It's not for classification, uh, mainly for classification, because we have one subject called uh, fuzzy uh, logical and logic and neural network. Maybe you have learned already. But uh, for these subjects, we still need to use classification. Because you know, currently, actually, uh, the, for uh, biomedical signal processing, we uh, also think about classification as kind of uh, signal processing. 
uh, for this uh, uh, subject, especially for stage three, we want to you to uh, uh, use the developed skill for signal processing and to improve the classification accuracy. So the basically the uh, the idea is uh, like this. Uh, you, if you don't don't use the class uh, the signal processing method, you can get a classification result. Maybe uh, the classification accuracy is lower. But after you use uh, classif uh, use the signal processing, you can improve the classification accuracy. So that's why I want to use in the stage three what you uh, why we introduce um, classification. So classification is not the main. Uh, content we want you to to have uh, to 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 discuss today, uh, but uh, but unfortunately, so many uh, I mean seven of you already learned. I think uh, maybe at least one group or one person know classification. So we will be very relaxed today. I will introduce you about classification. Uh, so for the classification, um, I think uh, I already. Said like because the classification output is discrete time, so it's a uh, I mean for example the most special case is binary, either zero or one, and uh, you can treat this as a special modeling problem. So for the classification, um, today I want to introduce uh, two very typical classification method. One is called supervised uh, learning. Based another is unsupervised learning based classification. For supervised learning classification, uh, we have uh, also we we will introduce you about MATLAB classification learner. So you can use this uh, classification learner to do classification, even you don't know the theory inside. But I want to introduce with you. I want to introduce with you about uh, how to. Uh, See the result because you finally you want to uh, see how to based on uh, signal processing to improve the performance of classification. So I want to teach you how to see uh, the performance, the classification performance is good or bad. Now we uh, maybe I discuss about two kinds of uh, classification method. One is a supervised uh, classification method, for example, support vector machine. So for the supervised classification, normally that means uh, you give a data set. This data set, actually you know, uh, for example, the, the, the class. So some data is, uh, for example, you want, if you want to class uh, a dog and the cat, this one is dog and the cat. So the first to give you a data, the, the data should have the, 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 the called the, uh, the marking or the, the the label is this is a whether a dog or a cat. So this kind of uh, data called is a, uh, is already labeled data. And then if you have labeled data, and then you can use supervised learning to train uh, to training uh, the classifier. So for example, support support vector machine is one of the uh, classifier. Another is called a uh, Un, uh, unsupervised learning. That means the data is not uh, labeled. So, for example, the k-min. So, k-min is like the data. If you want to, for example, they give you two different data. One is for cat. One is for dog. But they not tell you uh, this is cat. This is dog. But you use uh, like uh, the the for example the the distance some from in the future future the distance. Uh, if the distance they are close. You think this or oh, this is the one kind of uh, animal. Another distance is close, and this is another uh, animal. So th this is the uh, unsupervised learning. So uh, I'm not sure have you learned unsupervised learning before, but we in all projects maybe sometimes uh, you will use unsupervised learning. But in most case, you can make it uh, as a supervised learning. So uh, from my uh, understand, we already have uh, uh, several groups. They select the ECG uh, project. Some select uh, uh, IMU based project. 
some based on EEG to classification. So uh, for the EEG, I think uh, you already give we gave you the classified uh, the uh, the labeled data. That means uh, we know uh, this uh, ECG is for happy. This uh, sorry, this EEG is for happy. This uh, EEG is for uh, angry. We already give the mark. So you in you uh, supervised learning should be okay. And uh, for the ECG one, ECG one you may be uh. Basically, we uh, ask you to maybe uh, to identify TQRST some special feature, and then you determine whether uh, this is normal ECG or is a uh, ECG with some diseases. So in that case, this one probably when you generate it, and then you know you can you can generate you can give the label that you tell the person, you tell yourself this is a. Uh, the the EEG uh, the ECG with uh, some diseases, and uh, you generate some no normal ECG as well. You tell this label is normal ECG. So, but you also can not tell whether this uh, this normal is not normal. For example, when you when you want to uh uh, uh determine there's some for example there are new diseases you never uh, have these diseases before. In that case, you need to uh just like uh, you uh, collect lots of ECGs associated with this kind of diseases. Another, uh, but 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 even you don't know this person have this kind of diseases. So you you put a lot of people together. You do the just measure the ECG signal, and then you can observe that these two uh, this old ECG can be automatically uh, classified two group, not classified like it's uh, I mean uh, clustering like uh, as two group. But you don't know which group is uh, associated with the diseases. So this kind of thing is unlabeled data, and then you need to do uh, cl uh, clustering. So clustering, the most uh, efficient method is called k-min. So k-min is here. Uh, so it's a, a uh, k-min clustering. Uh, how many uh, students have learned this k-min before? Uh, today we don't have a uh, lot of students. Is that uh, uh, is that because you have already learned this uh, uh, technique before or not? If you learned this before, well, that's good. But if not, I think uh, we can spend some time to go through the detail. So uh, how about team? Have you uh, learned uh, uh, came in before? Hello. Hi team, have you uh, learned? Uh, you have learned before? Oh, you haven't yet. Yeah. So this is a non-supervised learning. Probably we uh, can go a little bit further. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, if someone never have learned. Is anyone learned the uh, K-mean before? Uh, buddy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mining of Massive. Hi, buddy. Have you learned? Uh, uh... Okay. Yeah, yeah. How about Leo? Hi, Leo. Yeah, maybe I I, I go some uh, stage. I learn something. I teach something about.
So we go to like uh, uh, classification. So this one is uh, uh, talking about the k-min. Okay, so let's look at the algorithm, uh, the k-means algorithm. The input is a set of data points, x1 to xn. These are the individuals in our data set. And we have k as the input. Remember, for k-means, you need to tell it how many clusters you want to find. So that's... So this is the input. So we have a set of points. Just like when you do classification, uh, you have a several data. So the data, one is called labeled and it's not labeled. So if the data is not labeled, it's not you, you don't have Y, so you only have X. So in X, X you can have a different uh, dimension. For example, uh, the simple one is only one dimension. For example, you want to determine someone uh, is uh, uh, male or female. For example, you only determine by the weight, and then this is only one dimension. And then you can find the threshold to find like if greater, for example, greater than 70 kilometer, uh, kilogram, you said it's male, uh, male and the less is female. So this is a one dimension. But sometimes you have a several dimension, two dimension. But if you have a more than three dimension, you cannot describe the data. It's, you cannot imagine the data. You only can imagine, you cannot describe. So for this one, they discuss, discuss about the two dimension data. That means you can draw in a plan. And uh, the key is how many, uh, Cluster. So it means, for example, uh, when you do uh, use ECG to detect whether it, it is a, a healthy or non-healthy person, you have a two class. So you have a, uh, the k is equals to two. So in that case, when you do the k mean, you also the k you should give. So if uh, you, this is one of the input, another is the set of uh, data point. Now we look at uh, how to the... That's what K is. So how does it work? It starts by placing K centroids in random locations in your space. Like what is the space? Each uh, each one of these is... And what's the central, uh, I mean, centroid? Centroid is uh, actually, you can, first you can randomly put them in the group, in K group. And for each group, you can calculate centroid. Centroid is, uh, I mean, it's easy to calculate. Like you just uh, find some, uh, uh, the mean position, and then this is called centroid. And in the mean position, you go to C1, C2, up to CK. This is the current uh, centroid. And then you can continue. It's a point in some high dimensional vector space. So you just put some points, K points randomly in that space. And then you iteratively do the following. First, we're gonna run through our data set, and for each individual, we're gonna find the nearest centroid. Yeah, and then they just do a repeat or recursive. So in that case, because you randomly find the C1, C to CK, right? And then you need to, you can calculate uh, for each point, because you have a point, N point, X1 to XN, right? For each point, you can find, because they have a K, you can calculate distance from Ki to C1 uh, to C2 and up to Ck. You can find the shortest di distance. And the shorter distance, and then you you claim that Xi belongs to C1. And then you can you can regroup all the points and you can still have a you can have a K new uh, cluster. And then you, you can calculate the new uh, Ci, uh, new uh, centroid again to that individual. And the way you do that is uh, for that individual Xi, you compute the distance between Xi and Cj for every cluster centroid J. And that distance could be something like Euclidean or whatever, whatever is appropriate for your data. Um, and then you pick the cluster which has the minimum distance to you, so the nearest, uh, the nearest centroid. <coughs> and what you do is you assign this point Xj to the cluster of that nearest centroid. So that's... So you find the xj, for example, xi is close to the class j, and then you give it to that cluster. And then the cluster will change. So the cluster will change. And then for each new class and cluster, and for each new one, you can calculate another new uh, centroid. And then you can continue. That's the first to do the, the algorithm. Repeat. Uh, you run through all the data points. The next step is you run over your clusters, over k centroids, 
And for each centroid, you recompute its position. And the way you do that is you take all the data points that fall into that cluster. So all the training, indivi all the individuals XI that were aligned to the Jth cluster in the previous step, you take their vectors and you average them out, right? So just add them up, divide by the total number of elements that fell into cluster J. And that's going to be your new centroid for... Uh, you have new centroid, and then you can repeat it again and again. Finally, uh, this uh, grow, uh, algorithm will, uh, will uh, converge, and then you have uh, the final result. So this is a very uh, simple uh, algorithm. You only need to define the, uh, the uh, what's the, the distance, how to calculate the distance, and then you can calculate uh, centroid, and uh, and you can uh, calculate the how close is for one uh, data close to a centroid, and then you can uh, do the re uh, recursive calculation, and finally uh, you will find uh, get the result. Now we use this figure to uh, explain that will be easier. So for for the example, this one have only two uh, two class. Uh, each individual is represented by two numeric attributes x one and x two, right? So it's just a two D bunch of individual. So that's the algorithm. Let's uh, geometrically, right? So this one is they use only two feature, so x and y. So you can draw all the points, right? And so for this one, you can see maybe this uh, is a one class and this is another class, but. Uh, Randomly, first you can just put one here, one here as two as two centroid, and then you can you can separate this uh, all this data something like this. You can because you can get how uh, this part is one class uh, belongs to yellow, and then this class is belongs to red, and then you have two class, and then these two class you can calculate the new centroid. For example, the centroid may be here. Uh, for yellow one, it will be here. For uh, sorry, for red one, we may be around here. For yellow one, maybe around here. And then you can recalculate all the points is close to this or close to this. And then you can get two uh, cluster again. And then you do a ca calculation. Uh, finally, it will convert. But I think I believe this one is one and this one another one. Let me uh, see. I have a simple data set here. I have a bunch of individuals. Uh, each individual is represented by two numeric attributes, x1 and x2, right? So it's just a 2D space. Uh, let's look at k-means in this case. <clears throat> so I'm placing two centroids in random locations, uh, and these aren't particularly good locations, right? So uh, let's see what it's going to do. Remember, the first step, the algorithm is going to run through the data points and see which data point is closer to which centroid. Is it closer, you know, this data point, is it closer to red or to yellow? And uh, a quick way to visualize it is if you're using Euclidean distance, then this means that there's sort of a line and everything on one side of the line is closer to the red and everything on the other side of the line is... So this one is like, a, this two is randomly selected two centroids. And then we can calculate, calculate the line here. That means in this side, it's all close to, uh, more close to the yellow centroid. And this side is more close to red uh, centroid. Closer to the yellow. That's how Euclidean distances work. So all of these guys are going to be assigned to the yellow centroid, and all of these guys are going to be assigned to the red centroid. So that's what your data is going to look like after the assignment step. All right. So the next step is to calculate the centroid again, because this, of course, is not the centroid of red. This is not the centroid of uh, yellow. So they need to recalculate the centroid of each class. You've basically colored the instances according to which cluster they're going to go into. Now, the next step is I'm going to recompute the centroid values. So how do you do that? You take all the instances that were colored yellow, take the average of them, so think center of gravity, and that's going to be our new position for the yellow centroid. Same thing for the reds. Take all the reds, compute the average, the center of gravity, and that's going to be the new position for the red centroid. So my red centroid uh, is going to move there. My yellow centroid is going to move uh, right there. So uh, yeah. that was my first iteration. Now it, and then I just continue in the same way that I did. Right? This is my data set. Uh, these are my new or is it closer to 
but now it's definitely red. And the and next thing is you readjust the centroid. And, and the key thing to not miss is that both centroids will for the two new points, but the, the yellow point. centroid is going to be. You will have two. Points. And finally, you can uh, see the. They'll change. Finally, so the centroids will be lift what's closest to, and all finally, the yellow what? points are already closer to the yellow centroid, all the red points are already closer to the red centroid, so no point is going to change assignments. No point. So this is, this is the final state converged. So this uh, uh, is the one class, is this another class? You can see, intuitively, you can see this is correct, right? So this is a k-min. So k-min is only, uh, I mean, it's uh, unsupervised. And also, uh, it is uh, very simple, but it's very efficient. So this is uh, one of the uh, most popular uh, class Turing method. So this class, of course, we have lots of class Turing method. For example, even uh, myself, I have developed one uh, class Turing method. It's actually uh, uh, it's in the writing in the MATLAB. You can you can uh, find that it's, we use the called uh, RCE. It's called uh, we based on the particle swarm, uh, the optimization method. So we can develop a new uh, clustering method. So this is a uh, unsupervised learning. Another one is very popular. It's called supervised learning. Supervised learning is uh, actually they already tell you uh, which is red, which is yellow, and then you just find the plan to separate them. So this is a uh, things uh, much. Uh, easier than uh, roughly, but sometimes if uh, this is a point is very uh, random, it's nonlinear uh, shape you need to find. So the the, the next I will introduce is a support vector machine. So the four classification actually uh, there's a uh, nowadays uh, the most popular one is uh, deep learning. For example, uh, you you think about uh, uh, face recognition. Face recognition is lots of uh, features. For example, one the human face is lots of uh, you have at least have uh, eyes, you have nose, you have mouth, you have ear, you have you have uh, uh, eyebrow. So you have so many uh, uh, things uh, to uh, to as a feature. So maybe thousand features, and then you cannot draw a point. You you just cannot draw right. So in that case, but the fundamental is the same. First, you need to uh, find the feature. So in detect the feature, and actually you maybe use a, a filtering method which teach you uh, in this subject. After you get feature, and then you uh, want to get, uh, for example, you have the photo. Photo actually is labeled. This is, a, uh, for example, this is a, a Steve. This is a, a Leo. This is a, a other like uh, uh, people's photo, and then you. Develop a method. So most uh, current method is called a uh, uh, deep neural network. For the, for example, the, for the image processing, you use a, a convolution neural network, but they have a lot of parameters. And then the the most the important thing is currently we have enough uh, photo. Before we take a photo, it's very expensive. Now you can use iPhone or any uh, some uh, equipment. You can take lots of photos. So you have lots of example. So and then you can use deep learning, but for you for this project, we are not want you to uh, do lots of experiment, and the data is uh, limited. So in that case, I teach you some very practical classification method. So one of the very before uh, CNN, the like uh, deep uh, uh, neural network, uh, the most popular one is called support vector machine. Actually, support vector machine can be treated as uh, only uh, single layer uh, neural network. So they only have one layer uh, neural network. So it's it's very popular. Even the Google uh, they use uh, support vector machine for uh, searching for uh, keyword searching. But now we look at uh, what's uh, the support vector machine, and uh, most uh, importantly, the support vector machine uh, will be a uh, uh, we also uh, have uh, some good things like he can it can treat uh, with nonlinear classification. So see this one you can see the key mean you find the the class actually uh, similarly as the linear like uh, because each time you class like linear. But for uh, k 
for the SVM, they can find a curve. Uh, for example, oh, uh, oh, 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 uh, the a curve. Oh, you can find a nonlinear uh, uh, hyperplane to separate the data. Now we look at uh, uh, support vector machine. Hey guys, and welcome to another fun and easy machine learning. So this is a uh, supervised learning. That means we know the label. We know it's dog or it's a cat. Video on support vector machines. So the other day I was walking through the park where I saw a lot of people with their pets, dogs as well as cats. And then I came across this strange creature. It was really challenging for me to tell whether it was a dog or a cat. But I eventually figured it out that it was a cat groomed like a dog. Now, if it was challenging for me to figure it out, imagine how difficult and challenging it would be for a computer to precisely classify between a dog and a cat. A really great algorithm for these types of applications is the Support Vector Machine Algorithm, or SVM. It looks at the extremes of the datasets and draws a decision boundary, also known as a hyper. So you can see, for this one, you have a, a label the data. You know this is a star, maybe uh, related with uh, the cat, and then this is a uh, right one is a is a dog, so something is dog. So can you find the best uh, classifier? So the best means the gap is the maximum gap, and the uh, and the support vector machine can do this very easily, very efficiently. Plane near the extreme points in the dataset. So essentially, the support vector machine algorithm is a frontier which best segregates the two classes. So how does it work? To understand SVMs a bit better, let's first take a look at why they're called support vector machines. So say we've got some sample data over here of features that classify whether an observed picture is a dog or cat. So we can, for So this x, y is two features. And then, for example, look at their snout length or their ear geometry. If we assume that dogs generally have longer snout, so they put the air and then this air uh, geometry and then this is another. And cats have much more pointier ear shapes. So how would we decide where to draw our decision boundary? Well, we can draw it over here, or here, or like this. Any of these would be fine. But what would be the best? If we do not have the optimal decision boundary, we could incorrectly classify a dog with a cat. So if we draw an arbitrary separation line and we use intuition to draw it somewhere between this data point for the dog class and this point for the cat class. These points are also known as support vectors, which are defined as data points that the margin pushes up against or points that... So actually you only need a support point to, con collect, to con construct this plan, uh, the land. Because the uh, other cat is not important, this other dog is not important. So that's why they call the support vector machine. So only use these three support points to can de determine the, the, the straight line. That are close to the opposing class. So the algorithm basically implies that only support vectors are important, whereas training examples are ignorable. An example of this is so that if so the model will become very uh, simple. So uh, that's why the support vector machine is very, uh, very popular. Before the, especially if your data set is not big, they use support vector machine. I think uh, for your case, you can use support vector machine. If we have in our case of a dog that looks like a cat, or a cat that is groomed like a dog, we want our classifier to look at extremes and set our margins based on these support vectors. So we have d plus, which is the shortest distance to the closest positive point, and d minus, which is the shortest distance to the closest negative point. And then we have the margin of a separating hyperplane, which is d positive plus d negative. The line or decision boundary that segregates the two classes is commonly referred to as a hyperplane, because SVMs can be used in multi-dimensional datasets, and the data points are referred to as vectors, as they have so here is only a two dimension, but you can multi dimension like a 100 dimension. That means you have 100 features. You can also use this one. Coordinates within the space of data. 
So what we discussed so far is also known as Linear Support Vector Machines or LSVM because the classes are Here, because you find it's the, the, there is a land or straight line or hyperplan but if you want to find a curve to separate this will this is the main uh, advantage of support vector machine they are using kernel method but you don't necessarily know the kernel method but they are you need to know they are powerful uh, linearly separable but what happens if we have a data set that is not linearly separable so say we are presented with data that looks like this where it looks almost impossible to use a single line to separate the two classes we can use a function to transform our data into high dimensional space so you can see over here, we go from one dimensional to two dimensional space. We can apply a simple polynomial function to get a parabola. And now you can easily see how we can draw our hyperplane. We can do the same for this dataset where it's easy to draw the hyperplane or line. But for a machine, we'd use a function to transform our data from two dimensional to three dimensional feature space. Now, the only problem with transformation into higher dimensional feature space is that it's computationally expensive. We can use a kernel trick to reduce the computational costs. A function that takes as its inputs. So they use a kernel method or kernel trick to transfer the nonlinear uh, mean uh, classification method to a linear. If if you increase the dimension in a new dimension, uh, high dimension uh, space, it will just use linear classification. Vectors in the original space and returns the dot product of the vectors in the feature space is called a kernel function, also referred to as kernel trick. Using a kernel function, we can apply the dot product between two vectors so that every point is mapped into a higher dimensional space via some transformation. So essentially, we use it to transform a non-linear space into a linear space. If you look at some popular kernel types, here are some popular kernel types that you can use to transform our data into high dimensional feature space. They are polynomial kernel, Radial basis function, RBF or RBF. Your Gauss kernel called RBF kernel. There's lots of kernel, and you can use this kernel, thing. sigmoid kernel, amongst others. So this is the port vector machine, and uh, I don't want to go too deep. But basically, this is a, you know, the some concept. Uh, that's enough. If you want to really want to learn uh, SVM in deep, uh, I'm happy to discuss with you, because I used to uh, develop some. Uh, support the vector machine based uh, modeling method for uh, uh, access response. So uh, there's uh, some, uh, at that time it's uh, very popular, but now they all transfer to learn uh, deep learning. But uh, actually deep learning also need very big data. So that's uh, sometimes is an issue. Like also optimization of the parameters for deep learning, for example, for, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the, um, Type of parameters and also, for example, for sometimes one of my students currently is developing how to optimize the neural network structure, so called NAS. So NAS is a very um, in a hot area recently. So how to uh, optimize a network? So the network uh, optimization before because this is a discrete time, so you cannot use the, for example, the uh, popular. Uh, derivative or gradient related method. So uh, so this is a challenging one, but uh, if we change the, we can find the best uh, structure and then hyperparameters. So this is a very uh, time consuming and also you need a lot of uh, powerful computer. For example, for, for our, maybe I, I will show you, for UTS we have a, a cluster, a big computer. We can log in and to do a, uh, uh, for example, CNN or deep uh, neural network, and you can even uh, mean uh, optimize the structure of the neural network. But here, don't be we don't be uh, too uh, sad. Like actually, uh, for CNN, the main issue is we need big data. But uh, for the SVM, uh, small data is no problem. So this is uh, SVM. But I can show you uh, how to use MATLAB. Uh, this is some uh, SVM example. So this SVM uh, classification example, I show you maybe this SVM classification. So uh, for example, we have two different data sets. I, I mainly want to show you uh, the powerfulness of uh,
of uh, nonlinear classification method. So first we look at the data. So uh, start to uh, draw the figure. So this already draw all of the figures like this. So you can see this one, uh, the red one is uh, one uh, class, and uh, the blue, the blue one is another class. You can consider this is, for example, this is a cat, this is a dog, and in some uh, space, some feature. But you can see if you use linear classification, you always can make mistakes. You cannot get totally separate. Actually, unless you use nonlinear, you can find a ball, uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, I mean, a circle maybe can can find the can classify can like uh, 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 can classify them. But now, if we use first, if we use linear, this linear kernel, the linear classification to see what we can get. If we use linear classification. This one we haven't uh, to that step, and uh, If we use linear, linear classification, uh, we continue. So this linear classification, you can support the vacuum machine. You can see they try to find the uh, best uh, straight line to separate this uh, Two class, of course, you have lots of error. You can support a point, lots of support point, and even support point so much, so many cannot separate very well. But if we select nonlinear uh, uh, curve, nonlinear uh, classification, we use a different kernel, and then we can get a good result. So maybe we go here. So this is a nonlinear classification. So we can, this is support point. Support point is not much less. So that means not a complicated model, but you can separate them quite well. And uh, so that's the powerfulness of a support vacuum machine that can be linear, design a linear classifier, a nonlinear classifier. So I think that's why uh, uh, before CNN, uh, SVM is the most popular algorithm for classification. And then we can continue to uh, to uh, tune parameters, can better get a better result. So this one is a I, I marked some uh, I mean uh, uh, support point. So if uh, because sometimes you want you want to have a big margin, and then you will have more uh, support point. So I change the margin. I, I, I want to big margin, and then they have more support points. That means the model becomes complex. You need to all, use all of the support points to describe the boundary. But uh, the, maybe the boundary become better. So this is a support back the machine. And I know like this one for you is you, if you want to, unless in the future, you want to do the uh, research in the, uh, in the uh, machine learning, and you don't need to know the very deep about uh, support vacuum machine. But fortunately, you can use MATLAB uh, to uh, help you uh, to uh, do all the work. So this one is I also copied from the MATLAB learning uh, uh, <coughs> learning guide, so you can find them as well. You can uh, do it. Another one. Uh, this is a I, I introduced supervised learning and unsupervised learning. 
in your project uh, stage three, you can use either of them, uh, linear or non-linear. Uh, I mean, um, uh, one is uh, supervised and unsupervised. You can also use linear and non-linear classification to method. Uh, and also, but uh, here I introduce you another very powerful one called the classification learner. They into in the integrate lots of different classification methods. Uh, even KNN, uh, SVM, and uh, lots of methods, PCA, and in, in one big toolbox, one APP, and then you can do classification uh, easily. So now I, I introduce this one. So first I need to generate data. For example, I generate, generate a data set here. So this is the data set. So I explain this data set. Is uh, we, uh, actually this is a called a training set. Training side, we have a, uh, two uh, input, two feature. So first, you first, first column. First column, you can consider this one is the, the height of the person. The second column is the weight of the person. The third column is the label. So if it's one, it's a male, and zero is female. And then I can. Uh, give lots of examples. For example, for our class, I can measure everyone's uh, height and weight. And I, I know you are female and male. I got one point. Actually, we can get uh, around uh, 20 uh, points. And then we can build the, uh, the data set. Because here I only uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I only have 8 person data. And then I want to build a classifier. And then if you have new people come in, I just measure, I don't want to know whether you are male or female. I just measure your height and your weight. I can estimate you are male or female. So that's, uh, that's what uh, we want. But uh, for this one, it's very easy. You just uh, put uh, your data like this. So the first two column is, uh, is the feature. And the last column is the uh, uh, label. So if you have, for example, you want to use another feature, you have a three uh, feature, and then you need to another uh, first three column is the feature, and the last column is always the label. And then you know the structure, how to input the data, right? And then for your project, uh, for example, you want to classify running or working. And then the first one is the heart rate. You can measure heart rate. Another, you can measure the frequency component of your accelerometer. And then you can find the two uh, column, or you can simply calculate the, uh, uh, the the mean square value. You just square it and plus them together and divided by the number of points. They can get a feature as well. So they have different feature you can put, and then you can build this uh, data set. So why uh, current machine learning is so powerful? Because currently you have lots of sensor, and then you can build a, a data set easily and can get big data. And then after you got this data and you put like this, and then you just run, run this one, and you can see in the workspace, you only have this three, uh, three uh, data sets, three variable. And then you just, uh, you can type classification lander, or you can just uh, directly find here. There's lots of uh, uh, tools here, so for example, you can have curve fitting optimization. There are lots of uh, powerful tools. One is called a classification learner. So this is a classification learner. It's here. So you just stop, just click here. So this one is I'm already open. So in that case, I, if I show you, want to show you how to use this one. First, we, 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 we have a new session. Yes, we have one to new session. And then they, they want you to input a, data and then you just input you say I input from workspace and then you can select because this is together with the training and the uh, testing so here I will use all of the data to do the training for example a and then you can see they have a first column and the second column this two column is the feature and the third column is the, is the zero and the one this one is the uh, is a label and then we can do a uh, training. So uh, first, uh, we can start the session.
So this is a new session. I, I will train the model. But this is the point. This is, uh, we have, you remember, we have input eight points, right? From this one, we can see, easily we can see in the right-hand side, this part, the right one is a, is a male. And then the, the, uh, the blue one is female. So we have two class. We labeled one is zero, one is one. So one is the right, uh, zero is the green. So you have already have this one. And then you want to select which kind of algorithm you want to use. For example, this use a fan tree. Fan tree maybe uh, you don't know, you just know the name. Maybe it's not a good uh, method. Then in that case, I train this one. I start to train. Take, take time to train it. So we, we have a lot of other uh, uh, algorithms. For example, I will show you SVM as well. SVM is a very powerful one. I will show you SVM. So this one is, uh, I mean, uh, maybe take time. Yeah. After uh, today's lecture, we will uh, discuss with you uh, about the pro project. So today is very important. I want to go uh, group uh, and group uh, individually. We will discuss. So the, the training uh, uh, result comes. So you can see the training result is not good, only 37% accuracy. So it's quite bad. So if we how to see it's bad, we can see the one is the uh, scatter plot is here, another is confusion matrix. So you can see they only classify these three correct. So this one, for example, this one before the label is zero, and then they, they classify zero as zero. This is only three. But this label is one, they class as zero. This is wrong, right? So this one is a class is a, is one, class is one, uh, but the predict uh, is zero. So this is one is wrong, right? So in that case, the accuracy is not good. So it's a three over five. So it's thirty seven point five. So this one is also you can see the ROC curve. I'm not sure you know the ROC curve. It's also very bad. ROC curve. The the area is not big enough. So this is called area under the curve. AUC is not big. So we in that case we need to uh, find another uh, find another uh, method. For example, SVM. We just select. There's so many you can select, and then you select for example SVM. So they have SVM. So linear SVM maybe not as good as uh, maybe not good because we can see this is not good. So we use a cubic SVM. I think this one should be better. So we're training again. So this time you can see the scatter plot. So it's nearly uh, just only one point have problem. So we can get. So this one is only one uh, error. So in that case, the ROC curve, the area is quite big. So this one. SV, uh, SVM uh, is better, but maybe we select the quadratic one to see whether it is uh, better than this one. It's also 87 uh, uh, something. But uh, we accept this result. Maybe not always we can get 100% accuracy. Because this one, we not only just training, we actually have validation as well. We get this model. And now you have all the analysis. And my thinking is like, because this is ROC curve, all, uh, all the diffusion metrics is a very good uh, indicator about the performance of your classification. 
for this subject, I'm not uh, see like you need to look for work on select the best best classifier. Actually, I want you use a good classifier. For example, IBM not necessarily be the best, but you mainly improve uh, your uh, feature attraction by using the filtering method that we teach in the stage one and stage two, and then you improve the classification accuracy. That's our aim. For this one, uh, we can also look at the ROC curve. You can com compare, and if your feature doing well, and the ROC curve looks uh, the AUC, the uh, the area under the curve will be bigger. And then the last stage is like if you are satisfied with this model, you can just uh, simply export export the model to the space, and then you give a new name. For example, I use uh, for example, I just use the trend trend model. But I use a TM, is a TM is trend model, and then I go to, and then I send it to the, I send it to the space. So we can see the space have a TS is a trend model, uh, sorry is a TM is the trend model, and then I can just like simply use uh, this command. We can tell, for example, you have a new person come in, and then I just. Uh, Measure, uh, for example, it is uh, one one seventy eight is the the height and the weight. For example, eighty kilo. Uh, mean maybe seventy eight seventy eight uh, kilometers uh, uh, kilogram. So can you predict this is a male or female? I think this one if uh, normally so should be a uh, male. So it should be one. So we look at the, the the model predict. So the predict is one. So it's correct. So the model pre, uh, prediction is good. So in for your uh, study, you can also use this one simply uh, for different value. For example, if I reduce the to one sixty eight, and the more uh, width is fifty eight, so this one may be changed to female. So it's zero. So you can see the zero. So in that case, all classifier uh, easily work. Of course, you can you can put you can generate lots of classifier by using different uh, classifier. So they have a lots of classifier. So you can see they have so many classifiers. You can select any classifier. Maybe I select all of them, and then I can try uh, find the best one. But also you can just like select. Different one, you can so so many. KN, for example, I select KN. KN sometimes is also very uh powerful one. So look at the KN. So they got one hundred percent accuracy, and then ROC curve looks beautiful, and then this one is also beautiful. This is a uh, accuracy is one hundred percent. So this is a confusion matrix. So this is a uh, you can see they are in in the label. Uh, true class is zero, and then my prediction is zero, and then they have four, and this is one. Uh, this is a true class. This is a label is one, and I predict this is one. So the diagonal side, the bigger the better. So this is a confusion matrix. If in the diagonal part is bigger, the better. So in that case, I think a KN may be better than uh, my SVM. So in that case, I I want to export this model. So in that case, I plot I export. This model, I use K, KN, I use KTM. KTM, so it's a KTM. And then I can select, so I can two, I have two model. I can predict, so uh, I put a K, and then this one will get different, uh, not necessarily different. They can, so, so this is a little different. So they got one. So if I go to, uh, for example, 48, should be go to zero, so this is uh, uh, this is KTM. But uh, uh, TM is another maybe uh, estimation. So TM also so you have different uh, uh, classifier. So they are also can, called assembly method. For example, you have ten uh, classifier. You can give a different weight, and then they vote, and then they get the result will be uh, more robust. That means if the data change. You are not very accurate. You can get robust uh, uh, 
the estimation classification. So this is the uh, the classification learner. So classification learner is very uh, good. So for uh, for for study, so they call the learner. So you you can uh, you can use uh, this uh, software to uh, uh, to analyze the performance of the of the classification, and also you can simply uh, get the classifier down. You no need you no need to know the theory. For example, the SVM, what's the theory behind? Uh, we are not uh, force you to uh, learn the theory behind unless you in the future you are doing research and you uh, uh, can use that. So uh, this is a, a classification uh, method. It's a, this is a traditional one. But nowadays, this uh, they all use uh, deep learning. So my I also use deep learning to do something as well. But so this one is a uh, so I use the UTS cluster, but it seems very uh, messy. And I close them, and I show you like how to. The, the nowadays they can use uh, easily use. Uh, maybe next week, uh, next uh, lecture, I will show you how to use. Uh, uh, mean deep learning, to do the classification. But uh, here we don't have the that big data set, unless you uh, have a big data set. I will introduce you about use uh, deep learning method use Python. You can call the PyTorch. Uh, the PyTorch is kind of, uh, and also a uh, uh, TensorFlow. These are two big uh, uh, tools can support uh, deep neural networks to do lots of things. For example, even uh, MATLAB, you also have deep learning toolbox. They can, uh, uh, they, can uh, they can have a transfer learning toolbox. For example, if you want to describe, uh, you want to discriminate uh, animal. For example, dog and the cat. Actually, the Google is already they they have a lot big machine. They have big data. They already build a network. This network can detect one thousand kinds of different uh, animals. And then, if you have new animals come in, and then you can put new data, and then you can use transfer learning. And then can you can build a new powerful classifier. They can classify one thousand and one, or one thousand and two, new uh, species. So this one is very powerful. But unless you are in the future, you want to uh, do the deep uh, neural network machine learning, and then you can go that area. But in this subject, only one sub uh, class is not. So today I stop here. Uh, our main aim is to help you to do uh, stage three. So after today's like uh, this uh, lecture, uh, I will discuss uh, individually with you uh, with the group, and then uh, next week I will discuss two uh, D uh, signal processing, it's image processing. So after that we will finish. I think then we will have uh, the last uh, one last week. We will discuss. We will have a presentation, final presentation. That's a uh, uh, have a big percentage mark. Uh, no, it's like uh, maybe uh, Curry. Hi, Curry. Yeah. Do you have uh, something to see about your project? Because I know there's uh, at least uh, two group select your project. It's a yes. EEG, EEG based uh, classification, emotion classification. So yeah. normally you use SVM or you use what kind of classifier you use? Yeah, I used SVM before. I think uh, uh, Yeah, maybe they can use a classification learner, or even they can use a neural network to do the classification. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, I uh, maybe you as a co uh, as uh, the uh, host, and uh, yeah.